if you do any prospecting with LinkedIn, you have got to go get set up with Surf. That's S U R F E. It's a tool you can use to add new contacts to your CRM system directly from LinkedIn in seconds. I'm using it every single day. I add contacts, follow my deals, keep track of notes, and it ends up saving me a bunch of time on prospecting and outreach, which means I can spend more time moving my deals along. The data is always 100% accurate since I don't have to copy and paste all the fields over from each and every contact that I want to put in my CRM. Instead, Surf does that all automatically with just one click in about 60 seconds. The team over at Surf has put together a very special offer for fans of sales players. There's a link down in the show notes and you can use the promo code JWSurf5. Don't forget the E at the end of Surf. That's JWSurf5 for 5% off your first year. Don't spend another minute doing things manually. Go get set up with Surf. Hey, what's going on, SaaS sales players? It's me, Jesse, and I wanted to put together a short episode today on the topic of brevity. Brevity being brief, being short, concise, clear, et cetera, et cetera. And why is this so important in B2B SaaS selling? Well, typically, uh, especially at this point, if you're selling a platform or a software solution into the manager suite, or even more so in the into the executive suite, then it's really important to get your message across as quickly, as clearly and, and concisely as possible. Why is that? Well, it's frankly that the, the prospects that you're selling to are, are very, very busy. And I was actually just working on writing up a couple of uh, outreach emails. And so I had the thought that I'd put together a quick episode for everyone today on some of the things that I do to make sure that I'm not using too much fluff, too many words in my emails or in my cold call scripts or anything else. Uh, it's all about getting it down to a very clear and concise message that's easy to understand, but also brings them in and hooks in their attention. Those are a couple of the key elements here. So uh, yeah, just going to share a couple of thoughts on this because this is something that I think is incredibly important. Everyone out there in, at this point is very busy. The market is nearly saturated with other SaaS tools and some of those are your competitors. And so I think the, the better you can get at short, very to the point, you know, copy in your, your prospecting emails, the easier it's gonna be to get responses from your buyers and your prospects. And the same goes with phone, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever other platform you're using. Uh, the key is to be able to sum up the value of your solution and frankly, the problem that you're solving in a very, very short and concise way. And the, the master at this is uh, Bilal Batrawi, who was on the show a while back. He's got a whole cold call script that you can download. I'll link it to the show notes here in this episode. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it. Uh, he shared some really awesome ways to flip the script in your cold calls. Specifically, his focus is on cold calls, but I think he's got something for emails as well. But the goal is to sort of bring in the attention of your prospect. But then again, keeping it very brief, very short, so that you don't lose them uh, after you've reached out. So what are the things that I do in my cold emails and uh, cold calls to sort of make it more brief, uh, more concise? The first thing that I do, and this is such a small thing and nobody does this, uh, I had a manager a few years ago make this suggestion and ever since that, uh, ever since then I've, I've just incorporated it as a habit. And that is when you're writing a cold email and you write, you know, hi Jesse or hi John, Jane, whoever. And rather than leaving a space between the greeting, you know, hi Jesse, hi John, don't create a space, just start the, either start the sentence on the same line. So that might look like hi, Jesse dash or hi, Jesse comma, you know, and then you start your message or hi, Jesse uh, dash, and then you go right into your message or you can indent one, but, but without the space. And I'll take a screenshot and show uh, what I mean by this in the show notes, just a, a little picture here so you can see. But the reason for this is because you have to consider that most of your buyers are likely going to read your email or your LinkedIn message on their phone. They're not going to see it on their desktop. It's not going to render in Microsoft Outlook or Gmail. It's most likely going to be seen on their phone through their phone mobile app email, uh, or sorry, it's their phone email app, excuse me. So I would uh, eliminate that extra real estate, which is that kind of space in between your greeting and the first sentence and just collapse that. Again, you can either put that all in the same line to make it even shorter, 
or just indent it without a space. That way it renders nice and clean. They can get the first line of your email very quickly, even if they don't open the email. In fact, I think I'm gonna look on my phone here really quickly. I think if I get an email through my Gmail app on my phone, I've got my iPhone up here, and I can read the first little bit of each email as a preview before I even open the email up. And you have to consider a lot of prospects are, are not even opening these emails up. They, they can get the gist of it or they might delete it before they even ever do that. And so it's really key to, when you say, hi, Jesse, put you know your most impactful statement first. And it's gotta be short. And again, I would eliminate a space in between the greeting and that first sentence. It just saves that real estate. It's a waste of space to put a, a, a big space there. And uh, you, you know you're wasting that real estate that could be used for hooking in the prospect to, to the, the, to the greater message that's in the email. So start with like a really leading statement. I sometimes start with questions. Uh, sometimes I'll start with a, you know, kind of big why statement, you know, or if you listen to Bilal, he'll talk about some different stats and things like that, that you can incorporate into that first statement that actually more or less anger the prospect, not anger, not you know, rage, but get them thinking about their current situation and how they might uh, improve that or, or what you know a possible solution might be. You kind of get the wheels spinning for the prospect. So lead with a really bold statement. Then I just typically back it up with something really short and concise. Uh, so, you know, that, and it's all sort of fact-based. And a lot of times what I do in my cold emails is I use statements like I've observed or we've observed or from the clients we work with, what we see is you don't want to come across as too assumptive in a cold email. Cause then you just sound like you think you know what you're talking about. And they, they might say, you don't know my business, uh, you know, uh, fuck off. Right. So don't be too assumptive. Use statements like I've observed or we've observed in the market that X and, you know, use a couple of really concrete examples and then, you know, hint at what you do, but don't spend much of your cold email, your cold LinkedIn, or even your cold call talking about, you know, my company does this and here's who we work with. And these are other brands on our, on our website that work with us. I used to do that and I've slowly eliminated, uh, you know, name dropping from my emails because yes, it can help with, you know, quote unquote social proof. And sometimes I still do it, but for the most part, I think companies want to think about the problem and the solution. So try to, you know, call out the problem with a bold statement, tease out a solution and then just do some light teasing on you know who you are and why they should take a 10 to 20 minute intro call with you and that's it then just ask you know interested in learning more how can we find some time to connect for an intro and that's it it's really just a couple of sentences i think a really good cold email is two to three sentences if you can i mean the shorter the better and i've talked about this before but in her book uh trish bertuzzi's book the sales development playbook she talks about the F style email that your cold email or your cold LinkedIn message should look like the letter F and just kind of maybe draw an F out so you can see what I mean. There's like two sentences, there's you know adequate spacing and then it signs off with a call to action at the end. The call to action should be something sort of polite like you know, how can I get time in your calendar to share more? Or would you be interested in understanding how this works? Or, you know, how does next Tuesday, you can get more specific too, how does next Tuesday afternoon look for a 20 minute intro call? So again, very, very few words. And one of the exercises that I then do, once I've written out a cold email draft or a cold LinkedIn message draft, I'll go back and just see if I can clip words out of it if and, and it will still make everything make sense without filler words because i know a lot of times we were taught in elementary school and middle school and high school that writing need, needs to be really verbose and you've got to sound intelligent and that's you know the kind of the academic way of writing is that the more words the better and the bigger words you use the better and what i've found working even with uh you know high level executives is the more you can simplify the message and use plain language, just like you're texting with a friend or a family member, keep it really short, keep it really clear and try not to use big words. Not that anyone's going to worry about going to look it up in the dictionary, but I just think it doesn't make sense. And it's, it comes across as either, you know, heavy marketing or sales, right? You want to use plain language, almost as if you're texting someone, you know, uh, use sort of matter of fact statements and, quote unquote observations, you know, I've observed this 
and go and, and read it again and see if there's words you can clip out that are just making it too wordy, too fluffy. Uh, that will help shorten it out. And again, if you could fit the entire email message inside like the, the, the iPhone mobile app preview window, it's hard to do, but if, if you can, that'll, that's going to help you uh, because you're going to be able to sum up your value and sort of your pitch in a very, very tiny amount of space. Again, most of your buyers are, are probably going to read your email on their phone uh, or even read your in-mail on their phone. Or in some cases, if you're leaving a voicemail, they're getting a voicemail uh, to text preview before they listen to the voicemail. If they have an iPhone, I'm, I'm sure Android does the same thing. So uh, be sure to, you know, again, keep it really concise and go through and see if you can cut out a couple of the filler words. And if it can still make sense without the word, take the word out. It really, it's better to be less wordy than, than more wordy when you're writing these emails and messages. So then, you know, practice that mindset of brevity or, or being concise because sooner or later you're going to get an executive on the phone and they're going to be involved in your deal and you're going to need to follow up with them and, and send large amounts of information post demo or post conversation. Uh, you know, maybe at, at a certain point you need to deliver an ROI example to an executive and just practicing that mindset of keeping everything very brief, not worrying too much about, about, about sounding intelligent or being wordy is going to help a lot because again, plain language goes a long way with these executives. They're just like you and me. They put their, their pants on one leg at a time. As one manager used to tell me, uh, they're all just like you and they don't want a big, long academic sounding email. And they certainly don't want that in any follow-ups and they don't want to get on the phone and have a big verbose conversation about the tech. They want to know exactly how it solves the problem and they want to know its impact on the, the greater organization. So practice being brief, reach out to me if you need any other ideas for how to, to make your messaging more concise and how to make your language a little more concise. One of the things that's helped me a lot is putting together this podcast because it's forced me to not think too hard about what I'm saying, but rather just execute and say something, right? So uh, sometimes recording yourself can help as well, whether that's through a podcast or just on your own, uh, you know, practicing delivering something very concisely without using too many filler words. So with that, uh, thank you so much for listening in. Hope that helps somebody out there. And uh, yeah, take care. Keep selling. This one is for the savvy startups and SMBs out there. I've got a secret weapon for you that's going to skyrocket your sales without the unnecessary headaches that come along with using one of the big player CRM systems. That secret weapon is Close CRM. Now let's face it. We've all been there. We've used a clunky, confusing system that kind of makes you want to throw your laptop out the window. Well, fear not. Close is here to save your time, money, and sanity. Close has all of the powerful sales tools you need, minus the drama, to manage your leads, track your deals, and crush your targets effortlessly. It has calling, emailing, SMS, multi-channel sequences, and it even has meeting tracking built right in. It's easy to set up and implement. You can stop screwing around with CRMs that aren't built for you and start selling and managing customers today. You can start a free trial using the link in the show notes, special for SSP fans.